Okay, I'm going to try and do this in one take. Once again, I'm going to use a ruling pen to draw some letters, and I'm going to be using some white gouache. And here I've got some, just some really, really cheap craft paper. It's brown. It's got a little bit of texture, but not too much. In fact, it's more of a texture that you can see rather than feel, so it's not going to affect the pen too much. I'm going off of this example here. This is a Russian book, so I, I don't know who the author is, although it seems this artwork seems familiar to me. Um, but I'm really particularly paying attention to the serifs on these letters. I really like the way that the letters aren't too heavy, but the serifs tend they really work well. So I'm going to work a little bit off of that concept. Once again, I've made a sketch, but it's not really a sketch too much. It's just a pencil, so I'm going to start. The first letter, I'm going to write the word mirage, which begins with an M, and I'm going to make the M a very, very heavy letter. I'm not too worried about centering it on the page because I'll cut this down after I finish the, the word. So there's more than one way to use a ruling pin. I got several comments on the last video of people saying, wow, that's how you use a ruling pin. Well, there are many ways to use a ruling pin. And in fact, calligraphy with a ruling pin is not its intended purpose. So I'm going to hold this at a lowish angle because this M is going to be really, really heavy. So if I get a heavy stroke, it's not going to matter too much. Let's see how I want to do this. Um, yeah. Since I'm doing that heavy letter in fast strokes, I want a lot of ink on there. And I want to make that small. And the last one I want... Okay. Before I move on to the other letters, I'm going to build up this M because my hand will get in the way if I don't. So the paper is really, really cheap. So it's not going to handle too much ink, unfortunately. Right here, this stroke right here is going to determine the weight of the whole letter. So I'm going to balance the whole letter on this stroke right here. And um, bring that out. So. I can keep working on that a little bit later. This M, I'm going to drag it. Yeah. So I'm going to bring the weight of this stroke to the left a little bit so that this, the bottom of this comes together. And then bring this down. And when you're building up a letter, you have a lot of control over which direction you push the weight. So I can push the weight here to the left, or I can push the weight to the right. And if I push it to the, if I push it to the right, I'm going to be moving into this stroke. So this stroke, I'm going to have to build up the weight on the right. But I really like the open space here, so I don't want to encroach on that too much. I don't want to remove too much of that space. So I'm going to build up the inside, and then I'm going to add weight to the outside until I'm comfortable. And I can see the paper fibers are really starting to, uh, to scream now, putting this much 
ink on the paper is straining its qualities. I have a bad habit when I'm doing art that I don't finish my sentences because I'm thinking about what I want to say and I talk really, really slow and then I forget to finish. I haven't forgotten what I want to say, I've just forgotten to finish the sentence. Okay, um, so this stroke right here I'm looking at this stroke in relation to this one. I need to build this one up just a little bit more. Let go outside a little bit. And then this stroke here. I'm going to have to build up the inside of that. Okay. And is pretty good for now. Yeah, once once the ink dries, I can always build up upon it later. So I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to move on to the I R A G E. I don't have any guidelines, so we're going to eyeball this. I've got my body perpendicular to the paper, so as I write, if I hold the pen perpendicular and I draw it down, I have to keep in mind that the motion of my wrist is going to create a curve. So as I pull the pin down, if I use my elbow or my shoulder, I can create a much straighter line. Or if I use my wrist to draw the line, if it's a small letter, it's no issue. But if I'm drawing a big letter, you can watch. My pin sort of starts to dip down like that. So I have to push out as I draw down. And that's something that just takes getting used to. It's not something that can really be and you shouldn't practice it. It's better to draw from the shoulder, but because these letters aren't too big. So I'm going to draw an I. Okay. That's about the thickness I want. M I R. And then I'm looking at the spacing. How do I want to space this? I want to M I R A G E. So, wow, if I push it, it's going to go all the way out here. So I've got about that much space. Okay, pretty tight letter spacing. R, okay. Um, the A, push that one there. There, okay. And this R, we're gonna go into the A. Okay, M R R A G. And when I wrote when I wrote my my example, I wrote a kind of an odd bowl in the G. It was really top heavy, but I don't I don't like that, so I'm gonna change it right now. And let's see how this goes. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna make it halfway. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And then an E. How do I want to do this E? We can do another bowl E, or we can do a, a normal. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, so I'm seeing, I'm looking at this kind of the, the line here. I'm going to have to pull these letters down just a bit. That G is really too high, unfortunately. So I'm going to, I don't want to mess with it too much. Okay, serifs. Um, holding my ruling pin at a very steep angle. And I'm going to bring it into that R there. Okay. Now, how the letter connects... I've got too much ink on my pen. How the letter connects to the serif is... That's part of, that's a big part of the design of a letter. 
I'm going to break that serif there. Okay. Uh, this R. Okay. There we go. Bring that down. Okay. Give it a little bit of ragged edge. This R. I don't want the bowl to be too pointy. But now. Um, got a few choices there. I'm going to do that. With this A. Okay, so, like I said before, um, this A here, and so you can see how the G is much higher than the A here, and I can't bring that G down. If I add weight, it won't look good. So, my option is here, the A is higher than the second stroke here, or the first stroke. So, if I set the serif here just a tad bit higher then it's not going to look too out of balance, it's not going to look too off balance and I can preserve. So now what's happening is all three of these serifs here they're on the same baseline and this one now has gone a step up higher and when I bring the serif here on the I in or the E, oh that's the E um, it's hopefully not going to look too out of balance. I want to add an, a little one here on the A. I think that'll look good. Okay, this G. I'm going to build up the weight on the outside of the bowl. I want to round that top edge a little bit. And then on the inside. And then I know I want a little bit of weight here. And then serif. Okay, and a small serif here, okay, just a little bit of weight on the top. And lastly, the E. Now I can bring this here, and this here, and, hmm, yeah, we're going to go right in the middle, just a little bit above the middle line. Build up the weight there, build up the weight on the E there, and here in the middle I'm going to make a kind of a bit of an uncommon serif there. I can create a small serif here on the bottom, and a small serif on the top. And I think that is about how we'll call it finished. Um, I can keep working on this and if I want to, to clean up the edges, but this stroke here, I really want it to seem like this M here was a second stroke, so I'm going to bring that down like that. Okay. And I want this to be a little bit more Fortunately, this is an upstroke, and I made it too thick, but, well, lesson learned. And that's another example of using the brewing pen.